Man Hunting Man. The film The Hunt borrows a basic theme from the short story, The Most Dangerous Game. The Most Dangerous Game by Richard Connell has always been one of my favorite short stories. It has all the necessary ingredients, action, adventure, drama, suspense, ingredients which I believe would be exciting to see in a film. However, when transferred to the film medium, The Most Dangerous Game loses some of its credibility. What once seemed to be interesting characters on paper become contrived and almost unbelievable on film. The problem is that the characters are actually difficult to identify with. In The Most Dangerous Game, Connell uses two major characters, General Zaroff and Rainsford. Both are established as famous big game hunters who have roamed the world gaining recognition for their daring expeditions. General Zaroff, no longer finding any challenge in hunting animals, challenges Rainsford to the ultimate hunting test. One man's wits and skill pitted against the others. What I did with the hunt was to throw the terrifying situation into the laps of two average contemporary men, Richard and Lyle. Don't worry, Lyle. Next one's yours. Come on, let's go tag him. Pick him up on the way back. Richard is adapted from the Rainsford character in The Most Dangerous Game, and Lyle is an added character, bringing a new dimension to the film. Richard eventually meets up with Williams, the eccentric old hunter, who is adapted from the General Zaroff character in Connell's story. Yeah, it's my favorite sport. <laughs> to you, it's a sport. To me, it's my life. With me is Mike Lloyd Gentry and Paul St. Michael. I thought it'd be interesting to talk about how you guys approached your characters. And uh, the most important thing, I think, that the film is, is trying to say is how the relationship was affected by the experiences that both your characters went through. Well, basically, the relationship was one of dominance. Dominance by Rich over Lyle. Come on, Lyle. Hunting's the best sport in the world. <laughs> See, Rich has this, sure. this fear well, that uh, if anyone were to see what he feels that he really you? is, or fears that he I'll really is, that, that no one would like him. And so he uses his dominance as a cover for this fear. Paul, your character, Lyle, I think is an interesting character. I think a big question that, that arises from the relationship is, why is he with Rich in the first place? Well, I played the character of Lyle as though he was letting Rich dominate him, you know, as though this was a normal pattern in their lives. You know, when when they had the the scene where he was faced with having to kill the deer or not, he comes to the realization that he's going to have to either face up to Rich as a man or kill the deer. Now, killing the deer would just be, I think, too much for Lyle to cope with, so he elects to face up to Rich. I think I can do it. Damn it, Lyle. Do... Now, once Lyle has done this, I think he feels capable of questioning Rich's actions, which uh, leads to their breaking up. Okay, what happens when Lyle confronts Rich uh, a little bit later and uh, they break up? Well, Rich was stunned. I mean, this was something that uh, Lyle had never done before. It's a, it's a very new thing in their relationship. Listen, man, I don't have to put up with this. I'm going to hunt, and I'm going to enjoy myself. And if you don't like it, you don't have to come along. OK, great. OK, then you just go along, you chase your butterflies, and I'll meet you back at the car Sunday morning. How's that? The fact that he got angry is a, uh, a thing of fear, the anger coming from fear, the fear of the fact that uh, because of this confrontation that Lyle was taking away, or he was losing his hold or his masculinity. Mm -hmm. Well. I think he, uh, Lyle, has certainly gained a uh, degree of confidence and self-respect by this. Uh, 
I'm sure he still likes Rich, as a friend. I think uh, for the first time, or seemingly for the first time in their relationship, uh, he wants a more, uh, I guess, a more equal friendship with Rich. Sit down! Joining Mike and me is Jerry Creamer. And Jerry, I think that your character, Williams, uh, is perhaps the most interesting character. He goes through so many changes. Uh, how did you feel about the character, Williams? Well, I felt that he was a recluse. Uh, he had dropped out of society, felt that people had wronged him, and uh, he devoted all his energies to becoming super hunter. It was probably an overcompensation for a feeling of uh, weakness. That type of thing. Jerry, how did you uh, view uh, Richard Baker's character? Well, after the first few exchanges, he became aware of uh, qualities in Baker that uh, he knew he had himself. What did you expect to find up here, a tiger? No, an elephant. <laughs> Pretty cocky, huh? He, this fascinated well, him. Well, you hungry? He, uh, yeah, he recognized uh, himself as a young man in, in Baker. Thanks and uh, he toyed with him. He played a game. He knew exactly what buttons to push and uh, how to maneuver him. Because it, uh, it was himself, basically, that uh, he was uh, playing the game with. Why was it that uh, Williams acted so erratically? One moment friendly, uh, the other moment unfriendly. Well, he had lived apart from society for so long that I really think that he had lost touch with reality. It's murder. Baker, life is for the strong, to be lived by the strong. The weak of the world were put here to give the strong pleasure. If I'm strong, why shouldn't I use my gift? But you're talking about men. Exactly. They can reason, therefore they are dangerous. I will look, Mr. Wicks, I'm not trying to argue with you. He would go into his fantasy and uh, and be rational, I'm sure, at times, but uh, the, there was a fine line there. In the uh, scene with Jerry, I think this is probably the first time in the film that we see Richard in a situation where things aren't quite the way that he likes them to be. How did uh, you see Richard as uh, approaching Williams at first? Well, I, I think when Richard first saw Williams, he felt that there was someone that he could control or someone he could bend to his own will. Uh, for order, in order for Richard to feel at ease in a situation, he has to feel like that he's in control. But I think the, well, the first big point was when Williams took uh, Rich's food away. Maybe? What the hell do you mean, maybe? You don't know a damn thing about hunting, do you? Uh, that was definitely a, a turning point in the film for Rich. Uh, I, I believe at that point, uh, Rich felt that uh, he was dealing with someone that just wasn't very stable or, or wasn't too too sane and figured the best thing to do is to make an exit. Mike, I think that uh, probably the, the most questionable thing about Baker's character is why did he stay in the cabin after Williams told him good night? Well, for one thing, Williams had uh, Rich's expensive hunting rifle, which would, he didn't want to part with, but that wasn't the main thing. If you refuse to see the truth, then there's no point in going on. I suggest you get some sleep and rebuild your strength. I imagine you want to resume your hunt in the morning. <laughs> that's why I came up here. And that's why I came up here. Good night, Baker. The main thing was the fact that uh, Rich felt that his, the confrontation was over at that point. As long as he uh, didn't try to escape or he played it cool and didn't try to sneak in the room at night and steal the rifle or something like this, that uh, everything would work out okay. See, that's the, that's the thing about uh, Rich. I mean, under pressure is to be submissive. That's the whole element of his character. Whenever he is faced or this fear crops up, uh, the whole thing is to be submissive and he has this uh, fool's dream that everything is going to work out all right as long as he... He doesn't make waves. But things don't work out so well for Richard Baker. He leaves the cabin the next morning, and he's shot at. The hunt has become a life or death struggle for Richard. 
Mike, what did you use as an actor to help you portray that fear and that uh, shock he was going through? Well, as you know, uh, I work primarily through belief. And at that moment, I believed that I, Mike Gentry, was in that situation and that somebody was trying to kill me. And so everything that you saw it was me actually going through that experience. Do you think that uh, Richard was a true coward? Oh, I believe he was, yeah. At that moment, um, Richard, being the coward, chose the submissive route, always with the, uh, the great hope that uh, as long as, as Rich is submissive, that Williams won't kill him, that he'll take pity on him and not, not shoot him. So it's my way of thinking that's definitely the coward's way. Jerry, at the end of the picture, when you're standing over Richard, Mike, we never really know if Williams is going to shoot Richard or not. Do you think he would have shot Richard? Well, it's hard to say. Uh, as we've discussed, he would go in and out of his fantasy reality world. Um, at some level, if he had killed uh, Baker, he would have been destroying the thing that he hated in himself, that weakness and uh, cowardice. You disappointed me, Baker. But at another level, he would have been destroying himself. Paul, uh, at the last scene, when Lyle is behind the tree, and he sees that Richard is in the midst of probably being killed by Williams, and Lyle has to make that ultimate decision of allowing Richard to be killed or shooting Williams, what did you use as an actor to help you portray that particular dilemma? Well, as you know, Dave, it's kind of difficult to play a scene when you have no personal experiences to draw from. So what I tried to do was visualize what I might have done had I been in Lyle's situation. Now, of course, having never been in that situation and hoping to never be, uh, I can't really say that I would have done or I would do exactly what Lyle did. In the hunt, we have basically several themes. There is the conflict between the two hunters, Williams and Richard Baker, reworked from the short story, The Most Dangerous Game. And we have conflicts within each character. Richard dealing with his masculinity versus his cowardice, and Lyle dealing with his passiveness. What the two friends realize in that final glass at one another, this is the basic theme of the film. The relationship between Richard and Lyle and how it is changed by the hunt. Thank you.